Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Sweet Tips, and this is part 13 of the Stock Pot Refining Series. I uh, appreciate the comments that you folks left regarding uh, the question that I had in part 12, and there were a lot of good things put forward there. Uh, one of the one of the suggestions was to use silver to cement out the platinum group metals. Silver is lower than copper, so it wouldn't cement the copper, but it's further up in the list than the platinum group metals, and theoretically, I should be able to get those platinum group metals to cement out on the silver. However, uh, if you look in the comments section under part 12, we got a guy, a fella named uh, Boring Old White Guy, and he says that he tried this he had the same exact solution that I have with platinum group metals and copper and he put silver in it to try to cement out the platinum group metals he left it for a, quite a period of time I think he said several weeks and nothing happened so I don't think that's the way to go what, I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cement everything on zinc and then once I get everything uh, solidified on the zinc out of the solution I'll have platinum group metals and metallic copper mixed together and I think what I'm going to try to do is use some dilute hot sulfuric acid and see if I can get the uh, copper separated from those platinum group metals I'm going to use just a little bit and try to do this as an experiment. And if it works, that's what I'll do. If it doesn't work, what I'll do is just cement everything out on the zinc and then remove, separate the platinum group metals with the copper from each other and then just refine each of those platinum group metals and try to get the copper out at that stage. So, here we go, part 13 of the Stock Pot Refining Series. Here are my two experiments from part 12. Here's the copper. And uh, I, the copper, I think, is not reactive enough to uh, give a good result here. It's too far down the list. Zinc, on the other hand, is much more reactive, very quick. You can see it drop the metals out of solution there very effectively. What I'm going to do now is use the zinc here to uh, drop the metals out of this solution. First I need to filter this. What I'm going to do now is take uh, this experiment here. I'm going to fish out that little piece of zinc that's remaining. Let's see if I can get that out of there. got our uh, solids left in this tube here. I'm going to pour the liquid off. Just leave our solid material in the tube here. Give it a quick rinse with some distilled water. Let it settle for a second. When I added that uh, water, I got a bunch of pasty looking precipitate. I think that's probably zinc. I'm going to add a little bit of hydrochloric acid, see what that'll do, see if I can dissolve a little bit of that paste there. That's about one and a half ml of hydrochloric acid. it up pretty decent there so now I've got my solids I'll just let that settle out all right that's settled pretty good here I'll pour 
this liquid off. And now all I have is my solids left in there. Now I'm going to add a little bit of distilled water here and a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. Got the metals that have been precipitated out on zinc in there, uh, mixed with a little bit of hydrochloric acid, some distilled water, and uh, some sulfuric acid, about a half an ml of sulfuric acid. I'm going to set this up on heat, cook it for a while, and see what kind of result we get here. This is my experiment to see if I can uh, dissolve some of the copper out of that uh, solid material with concentrated sulfuric acid. Copper is somewhat soluble in sulfuric acid. I'm going to add a little bit more here. Concentrated sulfuric acid. Just a little bit and see what happens. sulfuric acid in there. Uh, what I would like to see is for a green or blue color to develop indicating that I've got copper going into the solution. So far I don't see that happening and uh, the solution has turned a little bit brown there. Water to the beaker here to distribute the heat to this experiment. I'm just going to let that cook for a while. In the meantime, what I plan to do here is I've got a filter set up down here. I've got a number two 11 centimeter filter. Got it in a, uh, a Buckner funnel, which is a funnel with many holes perforated in the bottom. It's ceramic. Filter paper fits in there perfectly. Down here I've got a two liter sidearm flask connected to a vacuum hose. I've got a small rubber seal that goes between the funnel and the uh, filter flask to create a seal there. I've started my vacuum pump. It's a uh, HVAC vacuum pump from Harbor Freight, about a hundred bucks. Moisten the filter paper with some uh, distilled water here. Now what I'm going to do is use this transfer pipe at to get the solution out of here, down into my funnel and filter the solution. Got all the clear solution filtered out of my uh, beaker here. Put a little pair of tweezers to prop it, look, tilt it forward so I can get the rest of it out. I'm going to draw off the last bit of the clear solution from my beaker here.
just about all that that I can out of there. Got, this has been on now for about 45 minutes heating up. I've got some kind of weird pasty stuff going on in there. Not quite sure what that is. But that looks like our black metals down there at the bottom. Just let this continue to heat. See what happens. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try putting the solids the filter now that I've got all the clear solution through there I'm gonna rinse it with hydrochloric acid here we go notice that in this filtering process I uh, put all the clear liquid through the filter first and then I add the solids after all the clear liquid has passed through that filter because I don't know if these solids are going to plug up the filter real bad and slow this process way down. That pulled through faster than I thought that it would. I'm going to move it up here onto the uh, fume hood sill here. Got a little glass rod here, got some hydrochloric acid, and I'm going to rinse the ash off with some hydrochloric acid. Kind of stir it as I do that. Adding the hydrochloric acid and stirring uh, should pull any remaining platinum metals that are being suspended or bound up in that ash cake. I've got all the solution pulled out of the ash. I'm going to remove the funnel. Set it over here off to the side. Uh, this here, I don't think, is what I want to try to do here. I'm just going to abandon the sulfuric acid idea. I don't think that's a good way to go. Set that off to the side for now. We'll get this solution in a beaker. Get the metals precipitated out with zinc. Transfer the solution to this large 4 liter beaker here. I've got a few pieces of zinc here and what I'm going to do is put the zinc in the solution and cement out all the precious metals onto the zinc. Here we go. Should be a fairly vigorous reaction here. pretty much gone. I'm going to put another piece of zinc in there. That took uh, about four minutes to consume that sheet of zinc.
this shot I can see the red copper metal cementing out on the zinc just like happened in the test that I did earlier. And that piece of zinc's done. Oh boy, I got a really hot beaker here. Very hot. I'm going to put this piece in. It's much thicker. And this should do it. This should get the rest of the metals out of solution for me. Alright, we've got an unexpected result here. I put in that big thick piece of zinc. Lo and behold, it's like a bunch of copper is accumulated on that. The reaction down inside the beaker here is pretty much done. So I'm going to pull this thing out, set it over here in this plate. Take a look at what we got here. All right, it looks like the copper accumulated on my uh, piece of zinc here. I got the metals in, out of solution, cemented out on the zinc down here. I guess I'll wait for this uh, material here to settle out. And then we'll siphon the liquid off and get our black powders out of there. Take a look at this piece of zinc here and see what we got. It's all copper. It's cemented out onto the zinc. I'm not going to put that back in there, man. I'm going to leave this copper out of my solution. That was like a uh, unexpected deal there. I didn't expect that copper to accumulate on the piece of zinc like it did there, but I'll take it. It's all copper. some of this liquid off here and let's get a look at the black powders down underneath the uh, bottom of the beaker there. Uh, black powder there and we'll get that siphoned out of there all the liquid off of it to get it dried out and get a measurement on it all right now I'm going to transfer all the uh, material out of this large beaker into this tall one so we let this settle out and get the liquid off of it I'm going to 
put a strip of zinc in here because uh, those metals are going to want to try to come back out of solution. So we'll keep that strip in there. Okay, both of these solutions have been allowed to settle for a couple hours. I've got a piece of zinc in there. I've got a piece of zinc in this one. And what I'm going to try to do is get these solutions to clear up. Add a little bit of hydrochloric acid here. A little bit. A little bit. Stir them up. We'll see if we can get the rest of that zinc to react with any precious metals that are in solution and get these solutions to clear up. Here's almost gone, so I'm going to add another piece. Just let that react and try to get that solution to clear up. The metal has settled down to the bottom of the beaker. There's a little bit that precipitated out in this one as well. So what I'm going to do is I've got a uh, vacuum flask set up here. I'm going to turn my vacuum pump on and uh, get the solutions out of both of these beakers and get the metal out of them. Here is the bulk of the black powders that were cemented out with the zinc. I can see red copper on top of it there. I'm going to set this back here. This is the solution that I poured off earlier and I added some zinc and some stuff came out of solution there. It looks very similar to what's in this beaker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up here on a stir plate. Add a stir bar. Turn on some stirring. I'm going to leave the heat off. I just want to get this thing stirring in here. And now what I'm going to do is add hydrochloric acid. maybe a hundred ml and I'm gonna put in a little bit of three percent hydrogen peroxide and we'll uh, see if we can get some more of that copper out of there I don't know if this is gonna work or not this is just an experiment here okay our solution has only been on here for about two or three minutes and it's looking pretty decent here. Like some of the junk has been put into solution and left the uh, precious metals down in the bottom of that beaker. I'm gonna dip a piece of filter paper in the solution down here. Give it a status test, see if we got precious metals going into the solution or not. Hopefully we don't. see a slight tint of orange on that piece of filter paper, 
which means probably half precious metals going into solution. Okay, our uh, beaker's been on stirring for about five minutes. And as you can see, everything's gone into solution. I'm going to take this beaker down off the stir plate there. I'm going to put this one up on the stir plate. Get the stir bar out of here with a magnet. Drop it in here. This solution I'll put in my stock pot. It's just got a slight trace of platinum in it. To this solution, I'm going to add some distilled water. And then I'm going to add uh, about 10 ml of hydrochloric acid and we'll dissolve out all the rest of any residual zinc that's left in here getting some bubbling here which tells me I had some uh, residual pieces of zinc in this solution so that 10% hydrochloric acid solution will burn the rest of that zinc out of there for me. I'm going to add a touch more hydrochloric acid here. Make sure I got all the zinc burned out of the black powders. Turn off the stir bar here. Use a magnet to get it out of there. And we'll just let this set and settle and check and see and make sure we got all the zinc out of there the solution has been allowed to settle for several hours now as you can see the level of the metal there is about right below the 200 level ml mark there on the beaker so now I'm going to draw this liquid off and start rinsing the dissolved zinc out of the black metal this is hot tap water I'm going to do some small rinses now with hot tap water. I'm going to drain off that rinse water and then we're going to dissolve this stuff in aqua regia. stir bar back in here. I'm going to turn on a stir. Now I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid. I'm going to put some uh, concentrated nitric acid in here now. Start forming aqua regia to dissolve the black powders. Heat on. I've got five 3 ml doses of nitric in there so far. I'm going to put in another uh, few doses here, 3 ml each. One, two, three. All right, that's three more 3 ml doses of concentrated nitric. Let that go for a while.
I got a reaction. I've had about uh, 50 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid. I'm going to reach down into the uh, beaker here and get a little bit on the end of a filter paper. Do a Stannis test. See what kind of stuff we got going in the solution here. And we got us a nice positive indication for platinum root metals in solution. Get a temperature reading here on the solution. We got 83.2 Celsius. 81.5 Fahrenheit. The last two doses of nitrate produced no fumes. I'm going to conclude that everything has been dissolved. I'm going to turn off the heat and the stirring and let it cool down. My solution has been allowed to settle here and I've got some, uh, some type of precipitate down here. What I'm going to do is carefully siphon off the concentrated liquid into this flask right here. I've got a vacuum tube here. I'm going to vacuum the solution out of this beaker now and into this flask carefully. stuff left in the beaker. I'm not sure what all that is. There's a little bit of solution, but I didn't want to get that solid matter into my flask. I used a uh, vacuum device and got all my solution here. It's about uh, 450 ml. All right, now I'll take the uh, solution out of this flask here. Put it in this clean beaker. And then we'll put some zinc in there and cement out the uh, precious metals from this concentrate. It's olive green in color. I'm going to use hydrochloric acid to rinse it. Go. I've got it concentrated to 500 ml. I'm going to put a piece of zinc in here, cement the uh, precious metals out, hopefully get some nice fluffy precipitate here. Here we go. In this shot you can see that since I didn't denox the solution by ridding it of excess nitric acid, that I get some heat here and any metal that cements out onto that zinc will immediately redissolve and go back into solution. All right, that piece of zinc has been in there for about two minutes now, three maybe. And at first it wasn't doing anything, it's just kind of sitting there. And now I'm getting uh, a little bit more of a reaction. Getting some brown fumes in there. That's 
probably leaking from some excess nitric. This shot is speeded up 32 times normal speed and uh, cementing the metals out on zinc shouldn't produce that much fumes. It's very apparent that I have a whole bunch of excess nitric in there. This has been reacting now for about uh, 15 minutes and it's uh, kind of doing something that I hadn't expected. I think there's a uh, those fumes in there are from some excess nitrate that was used to dissolve the uh, the black powders in the previous step. I want to get a temperature on this. It was ambient temperature when I started, which was about 75 Fahrenheit. As you can see, the temperature is 192 Fahrenheit, 88.8 Celsius, and that's all just from that reaction. Just slow way down, so I'm going to add a few more strips of zinc here. I'm going to add a dash of hydrochloric acid. I've let the solution set overnight out here. And uh, I was expecting some black mixed PGM powders. Instead, I've got a bunch of uh, other material in there. I don't know what that is, man. That's uh, very strange looking stuff. Not what I'm used to seeing. Let's see what we got in the solution here. like I still got platinum group metals in solution. All right, uh, all I can think of to do here is add a little hydrochloric acid, stir it up, add some more zinc. strange journey. I've added a whole bunch more zinc, some more hydrochloric acid. I don't quite understand what's going on here. I've been working on this for two days now. And uh, as you can see here by the Stannis test, I've still got an orange stain, clearly which means I've got platinum in solution. I cannot get the platinum to come out of solution onto that zinc. So I'm just going to keep doing this, keep adding hydrochloric acid and more zinc until this solution clears up and my Stannis test is negative. I'm going to add a few pieces of zinc here. Some more hydrochloric acid. Stir it up. Keep trying to get these metals to cement out of this solution. It's fighting me. Here we are, day three. Finally, the solution is cleared up. Uh, I got all the metals to precipitate out of the solution there. I did a status test already off camera. Status test is negative, so I've got my black PGM mixed powders now. Recovered for that solution. Took three days. Uh, what I'll do next is get this solution off of here and then put dilute hydrochloric acid in here. 10 to 1 solution. All right, we're going to conclude part 13 right here. I finally got the metals to cement out of that solution. I made a rookie mistake and didn't denox the solution. 
denox means to remove excess nitric acid. The classic method is to evaporate the solution down to a syrup and then rehydrate the solution with hydrochloric acid and this will drive off all of the excess nitric acid in the solution. And I failed to do that. I normally do not denox my solutions because I use just enough nitric acid to put all the metals in solution. So I made a rookie mistake there. And uh, what we'll do now is pick right up with part 14. I'll get that solution off those mixed PGM metals and uh, we'll uh, use a dilute solution of hydrochloric acid to clean up all the zinc out of there. Then we'll dry it out and get a measurement on it. So this will conclude part 13 of the stock pot refining series. Thanks for watching.